Who the hell am I? I'm Gerhard, and I am a co-founder of Ableton. Ableton Live is a program where you can create and produce and perform music. And all this happens in one unified kind of environment. And really, the very simple idea that it's all based on is that all the components of your music, uh, all your materials, uh, are there in the form of what we call clips. You can use these clips at any point, at any way you want. Like, you can start them independently, you can have them repeating and looping independently, you can have them synchronized so they all play at the same tempo, you can transpose them in the pitch and so on, you can mix them. It's basically, it lets you think of your materials like you have a palette that you can mix with on the fly. And that's a metaphor that tends very, uh, caters very well to really an improvisational kind of workflow. But you can also take it from there to a classic production mode where you walk out with a finished product that you can put on a CD or on, you know, MySpace. At the time that we started our thing, the world looked like this. You had music software already, and that was very much a replica of the traditional studio. A traditional studio has reels and tape and mix boards and a glass wall between the engineer and the musician. And we felt that's a bit like the first ca uh, cars that looked like carriages. You know, you have no other thing, no other point of reference. That's why you emulate something old. And we, said, we thought that's not going to last. I mean, it was so foreseeable that the computer, a laptop, could do all that stuff as, as for horsepower and much more. And it would, need look, it would need to look different. And that's why we thought of a program that just looks at it from a totally different angle, where the idea is it's with you all the time and it helps you especially in your creation process, not just you know, when it comes down to recording a song that you've made up your mind about and that you've rehearsed and everything in as short as time as possible. No, but on the other hand, like the opposite, it's with you while you make the song, and it helps you make the song in the first place. And it's a sketch paired and an experimental environment just as well as a production setup. And then would help you to bring that to an audience and on a stage. And really oftentimes we felt these worlds connect so much, like many acts develop their songs while they are on stage. You know, for that matter, it's almost circular. And we, we looked at that and thought that's what it's going to look like and that's what we should support with a new piece of software. Well, one comment that we are very happy to hear oftentimes is that people will say, I open Ableton Live and I know I'm going to have a, a fun time, you know, a, a good time with music. Well, when I open, you know, some other program, I'll know I'll get some work done today. And I think that's very characteristic. It's, for many people, it's a powerhouse for their work day. These are, you know, hardcore professionals. But for a lot of people, and I think many, many more, it's really about the pleasure of the creative process, the flow, you know. It supports the flow pretty well. It, uh, we're trying to make it so that it puts as little obstacle between you and the music. And, the better we manage this, you know, the more people will feel emotionally attached to the tool, which we find interesting. I mean, it's almost like there's a, a contradiction there. You're trying to make the tool disappear, and the more you manage, and the more you succeed in making it transparent, the more people love it, the more they, you know, come back saying beautiful things about that. It's very nice. You know what? I have a funny, uh, I have a funny uh, comparison there. Like, when I came to Berlin in 1990, the wall had just come down, and people from East Germany were flooding into West Berlin, and everybody was so happy because now they could travel, because they had freedom. But 
only a couple of years later turned out that many were very unhappy because they really couldn't because they had no money to do it because they lost their jobs. So in so many ways, this is similar. You know, we have on the one hand, borders going down and uh, there's so much more possibility, but for many, it stays a theory, you know. I can sure be a uh, fantastic talent and I can, I can even, uh, you know, record and produce my music and I can even put that in front of people so that they can uh, get a hold of it. It can even be famous at the level of, you know, a followership of hundreds of thousands of people and still not pay my bills. That's entirely possible. You know, you have to be, you have to be very clever to run a musical career in a sustainable way today. Like if you don't play shows, forget it. It doesn't work. You can't live on records unless you are, you know, like a, a name that everybody knows almost. So there's a lot of potential in that the tools have become so available. At the same time, I think the challenges haven't gone away. Uh, they've just shifted. You know, yesterday I see an amazing band, fantastic. And probably there's 100,000 bands just as amazing as this band. They were able to come up to a level of, of uh, professionalism, you know, using tools like the ones that we make, that, uh, you know, leaves nothing behind. You don't, ha nothing's missing. And I just wonder, will they ever make it anywhere beyond, you know, a, a MySpace fellowship? That's a little sad sometimes, you know. What's why you hear a band and you think, my God, that, that would be, you know, in, in the old days. And it's a classic situation where the a and guy sits in the audience and takes a note, you know, and they get the call. <laughs> I guess it doesn't happen anymore. Well, we often talk to, you know, like um, you'll go to New York and maybe at a school or something, talk to a kid, 13 year old, makes amazing stuff on a laptop computer and they make a full on production on this and master it enough to walk home with, you know, a really good song. I think that's fantastic. It's not like they needed to, uh, you know, go find a studio and a producer and a, all that, you know, it's gone. It's amazing. There's so many middlemen out of the way. And why is it, why is it not just only fantastic? Because those middlemen had a lot of good functions too, you know, and some of that is going away and I find that scary. Well, s think about it. I mean, a lot of what the producer does, the, the classic function of a producer is to uh, say to, you know, Jimi Hendrix, no drugs until noon because we need that song done, you know, or uh, they, will, they will turn the musician on to something that they forgot, or they will say, this is important, forget about that. They almost play a moderator role. And I, I know from many musicians that I work with and am friends with that that is such an important role. And if you have to be all that in one person, you know, not only the producer, also the promoter, and then, you know, the, the engineer, and then you'll have to know about so many things, you know, it's hard. And then usually you also have a day job because the music alone doesn't pay for the bills. It's, it's overwhelming. You know, if you take a, any really uh, lasting production from, let's say, the 70s or 80s, you find on the uh, sleeve cover maybe 50 names. And all these people did something, you know. I don't know how many people put their best efforts into the making of Thriller by Michael Jackson, you know. And I mean, this is good for something. You hear this now, today, and you think this sounds like it was made yesterday. And that's, that's a certain kind of impact that I find is hard to get these days. Maybe, maybe that changes too, 
maybe that's, and I feel that is going to be the next big revolution where it's not just about availability of the tools, but where it's about going to find new ways to collaborate. I think we will look back at some point thinking we didn't know what we were doing. I think that's going to be the main theme of the way we see the history. I think we will just look at it like, wow, we were involved in this crazy thing, but we had no idea where it was going and what it was affecting and what kinds of roles we played in it. I think it's just too big for any of us to really comprehend. It's too big, it's culture, you know. Plus, you know, we're not theorists, really. We are just doing our thing. <laughs> we can't know where the whole thing fits in the grand scheme of things.